All right, get ready. We are about to show you the law of cosines. And uh, this is going to look a little ugly at first. I'm not going to lie, okay? This is, <laughs> this is a kind of a complicated trigonometric uh, formula. But if we break it down, I'll show you three of the versions of the, uh, of the formula. And of course, this is going to assume a triangle that has been labeled triangle ABC. All right, you may run into other triangles that have other letters, but we're going to pretend that we're dealing with a triangle called triangle ABC, and we're going to show you the formulas written for that triangle. Now, to break it down a little bit and make it a little easier for you to memorize, if you just focus on the beginning part of the equation, you'll notice that the beginning part looks like another formula called the Pythagorean theorem. That's the one that says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So, you know, if you take a look at that, you've got part of the law of cosines memorized. Now, the only part that's different is that you have this little extra thing that's been tagged on to the end. And if you recall, Pythagorean theorem was something that only dealt with right triangles, but the law of cosines can deal with any triangle. So that's kind of cool. The minus 2ab cosine angle C, that part kind of adjusts for triangles that don't have a right angle. So anyways, now let's talk a little bit more about this triangle ABC because this is really important. So hear this, all the lowercase letters are the sides of the triangle, okay? And if you see a capital letter, like when you see capital cosine C, that means that you're dealing with an angle. So lowercase letters indicate sides and then across from those sides or opposite those sides, there are angles. So side C is opposite angle C and angle C is indicated with a capital letter, capital C for the angle C. All right, now this is a convention that's gonna be used throughout. So I want you to just keep that in mind. Now, I'm also going to show you one of the favorite kind of incarnations or uh, special forms of this law of cosines deals with something I like to call the sandwich. And that's when you're given two sides and then there's like an angle that's kind of like sandwiched in between. So you've got two sides and then there's an angle that's formed from those two sides. So that's a typical case where you're going to use the law of cosines. Now, that's just one case, okay? And you'd be given certain information. For example, you'd be given an angle, right? You'd need to know angle C, and then you'd be given sides A and B. So as long as you're given three out of those four letters, then you'll be able to solve the problem. Now, the problems can mix things up a bit. What if they gave you sides B and C, and they gave you angle C again? could you find the missing side? And of course you could, all right? So that's another possibility. The other possibility is they could have given you side A and side C, and then you'd have angle C, and with those three bits of information, you could find side B. You could find the one that's missing. Now the final possibility that could happen is you could be given all three sides of the triangle, but you might be asked to provide information about a particular angle. So this is where you have to make sure that whatever's on the left side of the equation matches up with the cosine of that angle opposite. And that may sound a little weird there, but if you take a look at the formula, you'll notice that it's c squared equal to blah, 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 cosine, C. All right, so if the formula starts with B squared, then you would have B squared equals blah, 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 cosine B. So you're always beginning with side, a side, and then the angle opposite that side is how you end it. All right, so enough talking. Let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to give you a typical problem using the law of cosines. And then if you need to watch the video again, please do so, okay, and take the steps that I take and see if you can solve it without the video. All right, enjoy and I will see you in a few.
Okay, get ready. We're going to show you an example of the proper use of the law of cosines. And in this particular problem, we have triangle ABC, just a, a tilted triangle with a big angle of 103 degrees, and we've got two sides, 20 and 25. Now you'll notice that the way that this is set up, usually for a law of cosines problem, um, you can have uh, two sides and then you have an angle in the middle. This is one situation where you definitely can use the law of cosines to find the length of something. Now in terms of the side that we need to find, we need to find side AC, which is this side right here. It happens to be opposite angle B. So in terms of the formula, we're really looking for side B. And the way that we're going to write the formula for the law of cosines is we're going to start with the thing that we actually need to find. So we're going to start with b squared. That's going to be equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. Now that's a mouthful, okay? And there are definitely two other versions of this formula. But because of the fact that I'm actually looking for side b, I need to use the formula that starts with b squared, okay? Because I need to play off the fact that um, I've got to find this, and I actually know the angle b, which is 103 degrees. Now, these other numbers that are here, right? If this is side b, right? I'm just going to put a lowercase b there to represent side b. The side that's here is actually opposite angle A. So this 25 represents side A because it's opposite angle A. And this 20 that's over here, this is, this is a side that is opposite angle C. So this is my little c for using the law of cosines. So now that I know exactly what the parts are, and I've got a version of the law of cosines that's going to help me out, then I can substitute some numbers in and solve this out. So here we go. b squared is going to be equal to 25 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times the product of these two guys, which is 25 times 20. And then I'm going to multiply by the cosine of 103 degrees. Okay, it's a little bit tight up there. Probably need a little bit more room, but you get the point. I just substituted the numbers in. Now, if it turns out that you use the wrong version of this, all you have to do is rewrite a different version um, and see if the numbers work out better in that different form. Okay, but for now, I know that this is going to lead me to the right answer, so I'm going to keep going. So just to make sure that I don't make any silly math mistakes, I'm going to take it real slow. I'm going to take 25 squared, and that is 625. 20 squared is 400. Now, this piece right here, I'm going to multiply 2, 25, and 20. Of course, i got to keep that minus sign, so 2 times 25 times 20 gives me 1,000. And then I'm multiplying this times cosine of 103. So the cosine of 103 is negative 0.7822. Okay, let's just leave it like that. Now I'm going to take this a little step further, kind of simplify things a bit. I'm actually going to save this and multiply the last thing I calculated, which was the cosine of 103. I'm going to multiply that by 1,000. Whoops. Let's see here. Should get rid of one of those. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take this cosine of 103 and multiply by 1,000, which gives me negative 782, but I got two negatives here. So what I can do is just change the sign to positive. So I'm going to add 782. And if I want to be extra accurate, I can include two decimal points if I want to. And so I will, just for this sake. Okay, so 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these numbers. 625 plus 400 plus 782.23 gives me b squared is equal to 1807.23. And we're done, right? Wrong. Remember, this is b squared. So what do we got to do next? Got to take the square root. Exactly. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me b, which is what I wanted in the first place. So now I need to take the square root. So I'm going to hit second function. And then I'll get a little square root symbol here. If I hit second function x squared, it gives me the opposite, which is the square root. Now, if I want to be really clever, I can type in 1,807.23, so we can do that. Of course, I could have also hit second function answer. That would have done the same thing. Anyway, either way you do it, you'll get an answer of 42.5, and that is the length of this side. So, in the end, AC is equal to 42.5 and that my friends is your final answer. If you need more practice feel free to watch another video otherwise I'll see you next time. Alright you just got done watching the law of cosines video so I'm going to show you again the law of cosines and its three classic forms right. You're always going to start off with c squared equals a squared plus b squared that's the classic form. Don't forget that you have minus 2ab cosine c tagged on to the end of that. Okay, that's what truly makes it the law of cosines because you must have cosine in the formula. All right, it would make sense. How could you have the law of cosines if you don't have the law of, you know, you got to have cosine as a trig function in the formula, right? So without that, you know, it's just not going to fly. So now, what other bits of advice can I give you? Well, you saw the video, you saw how I solved it, so now what you should try to do is take the problem again, take out a new sheet of paper, and see if you can actually follow the steps. Now you may wonder why should you do this? Well, I recommend that you do this because you're rehearsing, you're practicing the method, okay? And then when another problem shows up and it's of a similar type, you'll feel very confident and comfortable that you'll be able to figure this out. All right, so go through the steps and see if you can resolve this problem. And if you get stuck, play the video and get unstuck just a little bit, just so you cross that one little sticking point and then stop the video. See if you can carry the problem from that point to the end, okay? All right, so now keep in mind, you can use the law of cosines in a lot of different ways. Um, typically you're going to be given two sides and an angle and you'll be asked to find if, if that's the case right if you're given two sides and an angle most of the time they're going to be asking you for the missing side and typically these are triangles that do not include a right angle okay that's what's so magical about the law of cosines so you might be given information about an angle like angle C and then you might be given information about sides A and B, but you could be given information about sides B and C or sides A and C, and you could still use the law of cosines. The final way, of course, as I showed you in the beginning, is you could be given all three sides and you could be asked to find one of the angles of the triangle. And so for a typical triangle that has an angle C and that may be the one you're looking for, you would use the form of the law of cosines that starts with C and ends with C. Okay, so you'd have side C to start with and you'd have angle C or actually the cosine of angle C at the very end. All right, so make sure that you got this straight. Copy down the formula a few times until you memorize it. And if you need more videos, you know where to look. I'll see you next time.